this jail, bro. They got me in this jail. I ain't supposed to be in this jail, bro. What's up, Ford nerds? It's time to get served. It's your boy Phil. I'm going a little early today. I got a hot one from Judge Stevens. Put somebody in timeout again. And now I got a good one out of wind up. Another surprise for you. So let's roll it, nerds. Okay, so here we go. This is out of wine dot. Watch my man in the bottom left corner. He does not disappoint, nerds. Residency, given his um, lack of appearing in court, his inability to appear in court on a regular basis, this court is going to indicate on two three two six five five thousand dollar ten percent bond. Not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed alcohol tether in the event be postponed through Wayne County Jail. I'm not this. I'm sorry. This is crazy. I am not. I'm. Hey. This is crazy. Hey. I am not doing no to no no no. Sit down. I have calm down. And then I gotta go through this. Calm down. Calm down. Stand up. Stand up. Face the judge. That's crazy. Buddy. Stand up. Face the judge. This is crazy. What I gotta All go right. through. All right. What I gotta go through. Stay right there. Your Honor, go ahead. That's a two one two two one four. The court's going to indicate a five thousand dollar ten percent fine. Same conditions. That's without consuming alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You might be post bond alcohol tether to the Wayne County Jail. Is it a personal weapon, ma'am? No, it is not, sir. You continue to fail to appear in court. It's nine thousand dollars tethered personal bond, and I got. 10%. I can't understand you when you're saying, but if it's a personal bond, okay. I know not okay. to drink the alcohol. Sir, sir, I've indicated a five thousand dollar ten percent bond. In the event you post bond, you are not. I heard I do know that personally. I apologize. Then, sir, then you. I can't. My mind was. My mind was. It was stressed out just now, knowing for a fact I haven't done nothing wrong, and I know I could be outside right now. I don't think it's okay to sit there and put me on a tether bond. You know what I mean? When I'm asking you for a personal bond, when I know I've been working still. When I know I don't want to go and stay somewhere. Sir, you're not getting a personal bond because you don't come to court. I, I, how, how am I not coming to court? Like, nobody you sits there and tells me where. Sir? Nobody tells me please. nothing. And then I'm please already in trouble. I'm being honest. Nobody has said nothing to me. Nobody has a cell phone. Please stop talking. Please stop talking so you can hear what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. You had a matter from 2021 that you failed to appear in court on. I do, I do a lot of work out there. Listen to the yeah. judge. That is why this court has indicated the bond. It is indicated because you have failed to appear in court. You just served 45 days jail in December. But who's got my card? That's what I'm trying to say. If somebody has my cards, I should have got a personal bond. Sir, stop talking, please. You should have just got a personal bond is what I'm saying. Somebody stole my shit. Sure. I should be released already. Sure. I should not be actually not. incarcerated because of somebody sitting there and actually, like, taking from me. And I Sir, haven't been in jail. If you will stop talking so I can talk. You just served 45 days jail, sentenced December 5th in this court for disturbing the peace. Oh, you get God, out of jail in that matter. Stop talking. You get out of jail in that matter, in this matter, and you pick up another one on Lincoln Park. You get yeah. out of jail there, and now you pick up this case. Listen to the all judge. For the, all for the same type of offenses. So the court's indicating a $5,000 10% bond, not a personal bond, 10% bond. In the event you do post bond, 
You're not supposed not to consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed, and you will not be released without an alcohol tether. That is the order of this court. We'll see you back on February 21st. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Sorry. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Judge DeSanto strikes again. That was a quality qu clip. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. All right. My favorite, John Stevens, Mr. Texas, put someone in timeout for a second time in two days. I think this is his go-to now. And for all the people in the comments who, who love the timeout, you got what you asked for. Here we go. It and I'm going to give you a setup um, because the feed turned on um, halfway in. So what has happened was a girl uh, is getting her parole, um, her pr probation, I'm sorry, probation revoked uh, because they were there was some funny business with um, the pee cup with her and her boyfriend who came in. And then John, uh, Judge Stevens brings the boyfriend up and he rips into the boyfriend also i mean this is this is this is as good as it gets um so let's roll so and now now they're going to go through her uh, medications and she's already locked up now um so now they're gonna now they're gonna see what they're gonna do with her all right here we go most of them positive for buprenorphine buprenorphine Morphine, and she has a prescription for that, Your Honor. Okay. I see many that aren't. aren't no, that. and I have a witness to prepared to testify that. Okay, here's the deal. The, no. you, we can knock yourself out. Okay. But is who's going to uh, who's going to uh, negate spitting trying to falsify the test the other day? Who's going to do well, that? That was before a prior court setting, Judge. I know, but it happened. But who's going to do that? Because that's an issue too. We don't want to talk about it. Yeah, let's let's talk about the whole thing. But it only takes one foolish error like that. But an attempt to adulterate or defraud the court by trying to falsify a test, kind of knock yourself out. But that's kind of a elephant in the room for me. So, what are you going to do? Ms. Bro, I've heard the judge uh, about the spitting in the cup and all. Why? Hmm? Well, I really would. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm any statement you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. Who? That was you. Go ahead. Um, if I remember that, I took a, I couldn't go to the bathroom with me sometimes, and I took a sip of water. I was drinking, trying to go to the bathroom, and I set the cup in point, and I went to sit on the pee, and it went. She thought that I spit it in the cup, and I, I really didn't. Um, I've stated that this the first time too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we these are 20 results yes sir 20 fall uh and you're saying the the buprenorphine buprenorphine what they're trying to say is buprenorphine and that's the suboxone for um, opiate addiction, and it's the film, the sublingual, sublingual film that she, you put underneath your tongue, um, and that's what. And it's so funny because all these old Texans are trying to say, it's buprenorphine. She has a prescription prescription for it. Out of the twenty, so that would be even if that were true. That's. Eleven. That means nine tests that aren't 
aren't showing that. Yeah, and like I said, we have a witness that would testify that they were living together, that he, unbeknownst to Miss Bro, was doing methamphetamine. And then that, and that oh, yeah, him. let's hear that. If that's what you want to do. He's out. Go ahead. Room. Joe Kirby. <laughs> Again, this is uh, clause number 2137235, the state of Texas versus Chandler Brown. Pull him up. Oh, he's a winner. He is a winner. Your witness. State your name for the record, please. Joe Kirby. Joe Raise Kirby. your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statement you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yeah. Lower your hand. Mr. Kirby, do you know Shandra Brough? Yes. How do you know her? Uh, we've been dating for a while. Well, is it more than a dating relationship? Or did yeah. You, did y'all live together? Yes. Yeah. Let me How see, please. How long have y'all lived together? Uh, During that time, did you continue to use methamphetamine? Yes. Did she know you were using methamphetamine? Hold on. What is your full name? Joe Kenner Curry. How do you spell? K -K is it K-I-R-B-Y? -K Where do you live? <clears throat> I was living with her. No. Where do you live? Oklahoma. Have you ever lived in Jefferson County, Texas? Yeah. Or not in Jefferson County. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, Jefferson County, yeah. I lived in, in her. I lived with Shonda. What was the address there? 711 Ridgewood Drive. How long did you live there? And that, that's in Beaumont? No, oh, it's uh, in Port Natchez. Port Natchez. How long did you live there? Almost two years. During what period of time? Uh... Up until now, really. In the past, the past two years. Okay. When did you move to Oklahoma? Um, I guess it would be uh, three weeks ago, a month, a month ago, something like that. That him? I'm sorry. That's a just traffic ticket. But that's him. Yes. Green four. I think. Can you, is there anything no. when you double click that? It doesn't show any data behind it? No, because they're not counting charges. They're not in our system. Does that have a date on it? Yeah. He was, Are all of those on the same day? They were municipal court. Is that all on the same day or different? He was arrested on 10 5 and looks like he got out 10 on 10 5 6. Of what? Of of what? 22. Okay. October. For all of those at the mm -hmm. same time? Go ahead. Have you ever before been convicted of felony or misdemeanor in this or any other state? Uh, I believe a misdemeanor or something here. I know there's in, uh, no felony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, during the two years you lived with this Miss Bro, you used methamphetamine. Yes. During that time you lived with this Bro, were y'all intimate in your relationships? Yes. Did you know she had a drug patch on? Yes. Did your body come in contact with the drug patch? Yes. Have you ever seen her use any kind of drugs during the two years y'all were together? When we first got together. Uh, two years ago? Yeah. 
before she got had the patch on and all that. Okay, and since she's had the patch on, have you seen her do any kind of drugs? No, sir. Okay, do you know if she has a prescription for buprenorphine? <laughs> buprenorphine. Yes, I got it in, in her bag over there. Okay. Do you have that prescription? Could you get it and bring it to A hush falls over the crowd. Okay, I'm showing you a prescription bottle for Chandra Bro for Buprenorphine. You want to spell it? B U P R E N slash N A L O X O N E eight milligrams film. This is the prescription you've seen her take. And a prescription for Lisinopril, L I S I N O P R I L. Is this a prescription you've seen her take? Yes. Chlorazepate, C L O R A Z E P A T E. Is this a prescription? The prescription you've seen her take and she takes? Yes. Level, level, uh, Roxen, L E V O T H Y R O X I N E. Is this a, a prescription you've seen her take? Yes. Pass the witness. So let me get this straight. You've been using illegal drugs. Is that right? Been committing crime. Yep. In the state of Texas. And what dates were those? What what dates during all this time that we have on this to this? Can you mark next to this little list which which dates you were using methamphetamine? The whole the whole time. That whole time. All these times you were using methamphetamine. Yeah. Um, Where were you getting the methamphetamines from? Uh, Who are you buying them from? Individual. A answer uh, this uh, question. Uh, I don't know the last name. And John. John. Where do you meet John at? Where would you get him at? Uh, uh, hotel. Which hotel? Uh, he was already different hotels. Okay. Where at? Which city? In what, Nederland. Nederland. So you just... Got it from some guy named John, different hotels. How did you get a hold of him? You got a phone number? Um, yeah, I had, had a, well, I didn't really get a hold of him most time. I just got a hold of him. My buddy, it was his friend, and so he would get a hold of him most time. Okay, who's his buddy? What's his name? Uh, Charles. Charles what? Uh, Jake. Charles Jake. Um, okay, where's he live? He lives in uh, Heatherbrook. Heatherbrook? Is that a city or is that a street? Uh, it's a, apartments in Needle. Apartments in Needle, okay. And how would y'all go about doing it? You call him and do what? Uh, just call him and ask him if he could get a hold of his friend. So let me ask you this. You said you've seen Chandra Bro take the, right? Uh, yeah. And when she takes it, was she driving the car? No. Who would drive? She usually she usually take it uh whenever she would that that night before that when she got home. Not before when she got home. So she wouldn't drive. What about these? What are these for? Do you know what they're for? Uh no, uh no, I don't know exactly what they're for. Okay. No, she got blood pressure, blood pressure medicine and uh uh 
from the, from the house down there. So all this time, how did you how did you come in contact with the drug patch underneath the the outside part that protects her from water and things? How did you come underneath that drug patch? Uh, I'm sweat. I sweat. Okay. So the the patch itself has has a has a layer over it, doesn't it? Have you seen it? You've seen it, right? Yeah, but also it, 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 have you have you seen it? Yeah, but after you have it open about a week, it starts it, it starts start healing by itself. You take a shower and stuff. Yeah, you take showers if you if you if you try to rub it off, it'll no, come off. No, I'm just putting clothes on, taking showers, washing your body, it's normal hiking. So this time that you were using, how much methamphetamine were you using? I don't know. I was using it frequently. Okay. And Quite so frequently. so every time you said every every time you were using it and you came in contact with the patch, but sometimes it doesn't register, did it? Um, I must not have it always registered these, though the the once you took under her tongue, right? Yeah, that's what she was. That's what she was taking. She wasn't taking the. the she wasn't doing the drug. But you were coming in contact with her every day and all this, weren't you? Oh uh, yeah, but I was also trying to avoid the patch. Oh, so you were avoiding the patch? Yeah, I now, was lying why? to her. Oh, but how are you trying to avoid the patch? Uh, it's on one side of her body. I tell you, you know, to, not to touch it, to stay on one side. I mean. So whenever we came up before, when she tested positive before, you didn't come for it then, did you? No, I didn't. And she got thrown in jail, bonded back out, right? Yes. And then now we've got some more positive drug patch stuff, and, and now you're coming forward now that you're living in Oklahoma, right? You have to speak out. Yes. And you're saying that the only way she tested positive is because you were using and you got in contact with the drug patch. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the signs behind the drug patch tell you. I mean, they're, they're sweating. That's, that's why who tells you that? You can, you can look it up about the, the sweat patches. They did the, the, a. So who, who patch, looked it up? I did. Uh, I did. When? Yesterday. Okay. Yesterday, before you came to testify today. Yes. Okay. I'll pass one, Jim. No further questions. Do you have a driver's license? No. Who, who drove today? Who drove over here? Oh, I got to drop it off. Let me see an ID. I don't have one. You have no, you're an anonymous person. No, I told you my name. I think I know. What do you have in your wallet? Nothing. Look, I just got a wallet. Let me see a wallet. Okay. What's in the I don't wallet? Have a wallet. I don't, you don't anything. even have a wallet. No. <laughs> You're you got nothing, but you have under oath sworn that you have used you possess methamphetamine, a felony offense in this state, here in Jefferson County, Texas, recently. Correct? Right. You're saying that? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nothing further this way, Ms. Your Honor. All right. Um, you're not going anywhere. You're going to sit right over there. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the state of Texas to look into this before you leave and see where they, uh, they're going to prosecute you for what you claim you are dealing with. The only problem with you is the uh, number one, you're not credible. You, I don't believe anything you say. You don't even have an ID. But you are an admitted meth loser. You can't even explain to this court the name of the person you're getting these illegal drugs, how that's working. It's all anonymous. It's not believable, except the part that you're willing to say under oath that you committed crimes recently here in Jefferson County, Texas. So, uh, and also the fact that the probation officer witnessed you trying to adulterate and defraud the drug test completely negates anything you'd say because you weren't there. But both of you in trouble now. You're not going to try to come in and pull a, a game, play gamesmanship with this court over the scourge of the world, drugs. 
serious goes. All right, what else? And we call Ms. Bro, Your Honor. You can sit over there. Ms. Ms. Bro, why do you take the hydro oxine? That is a um, antihistamine. I have bad allergies. And why do you take the chlorozepate? That is a, um, like an anti anxiety for depression. I don't really take it often. It's the barbiturate on that drug test. Okay, and levothyroxine? That has a thyroid problem. And, I take it. and then buprenoxaline? That is prescribed by my outpatient program. My, uh, I have like a counselor and I'm in an outpatient drug program. I work a 12 step program and I'm a sponsor. And she prescribes me that. And I do. Um, and I, she just like, I mean, that's the medicine she has me on. And then I do my program with them. Okay, and then Lizzo, no prill? That is for high blood pressure. And the, I believe that's all of them. Once again, have you yourself done any meth? No, sir, I have not. And I can, I promise that I'm, um, my even my on the program, the outpatient program I'm in that prescribes that, they have a record, sir, of my drug tests, and I've given them to Mr. Lincoln, where I, they test me specifically for that drug. And I wasn't trying to go over your head with the hair follicle tests. I was advised to do them to prove to you that I wasn't doing anything. And I really was not trying to go over your you or the state's head or disrespect the court. And I'm and the, the whatever it was with the cup incident was mainly an accident of you sitting down. It was an accident of me sitting down. Um, I don't, I've said it over and over and I, I mean I don't know what else to say but I want you to know like, I respect yeah. this court I That's respect what you, I'm sorry I'm looking at this is that what you gave us there are five yes yeah, so this is the buprenorphine that she's been testing positive for You realize wait 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 stay high where's where are the drugs i didn't sorry i didn't bring the um where are the drugs i didn't bring the medication here there's there's supposed to be 28 in here this was this was given to you on 131 131 we're only nine ten days into this month they're supposed to, there were 28 and now there's 28 missing Maybe and it says i'm what is that what systemic with you folks you interrupt you can't even follow the rules because you want to control the situation when you see it going bad you want to stop the wreck because you've been in control in the drug world there's 28 this one a day uh, there are 18 missing here. Uh, let me see. This medication may be habit forming. Big yellow, big letters. Now, where are the rest of the drugs? Sir, I, <laughs> I didn't bring the bottles here. I was there. Yeah. Now. All right. I didn't. Well, they're missing. They're missing. Your Honor, we would call, we call Mr. Kirby. Oh, Mr. Uncredible. Come on up. Have you found a have you found an ID in the last few minutes that supports anything you say in your identity? I because got a picture you're, of my ID. Is that the best you got in the yes, United sir. States of America? Yes, sir. Are you employed somewhere? Yes. Where? Uh, tree service. Are you having troubles? Where? 
have, you're looking have, over here. I'm employed in the district with, with, with multiple tree services first here, thing, but I just moved. So I'm, I'm first just thing a liar does. Thing. The first thing a liar does is look away. Did you know that? That's what you keep doing. I'm going to ask you a question. Who's your employer? Ronald Chad Ferguson. What's his phone number? I don't. It's in my phone. Okay. It's in my phone. Where's your phone? My pocket. What about the guy that you get the drugs from? Is his phone number in there too? Uh, I, get, I, get, I get a hold of him on Facebook. Is that what you do? He don't, he don't have a phone number. He's uses Wi Fi. And so I get a hold of my friend on Facebook and then he gets a hold That's of his the supplier, friend. your supplier. No, he gets a hold of his friend. I guess it's true. Yes. Yes. What's his? Okay. What's the guy's? How do you get your supplier for methamphetamine when you need it? How do you do it? What do you go about doing it? How do you do that? I want to know mechanically. Just, what do you do? Uh, message him and just see what he's doing and then go. Uh, then go. How do you do that? Are you using a phone or something? Yeah, I use my phone. And, and so what do you do? Tell me exactly when you want your drugs, your your illegal meth that you <laughs> yes, say, say legal you meth. use around her. What do you do? How do you get it? Uh, I, get a hold, I, get, I get a hold of my friends. And what do you do? And, How do you and, get a hold of it? Uh, either Facebook or uh, the Facebook mostly. Most of them they don't have Facebook. Oh, he doesn't have a phone. And he has a phone, but it, you don't have you don't have like no uh, data on it. He just uses Wi-Fi and uses his phone. Okay, so so what's the identity? Okay, so yeah. you go on Facebook. What's his Facebook name? His name is uh, 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 CJ. CJ, or uh, and then there's another one, uh, Dylan McGuire. I don't know. Uh, there's a couple different friends that that I have that do it, that they use, and they they know they know people. They've been down here a lot. Where do they live? He lives. I told you Who's one, he? Uh, what one? I don't know, Any of them? Just name who it is before you say he, because half the planet. Dylan McGuire lives on Taft Avenue. Gross. He in Gross. And he supplies drugs to everybody. He's and a supplier. Me, I don't know who, I don't know okay, he's a supplier of meth to you, right? Yeah. What's his name? Dylan McGuire. On tap. On tap. Is, does he work somewhere? Uh, no. I mean, he does whatever he can for money. He don't have no actual job. He just does stuff every now and then. He would get a little mechanic job or something. Okay. And who else is another supplier? Um. There was more than one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, they weren't really. Just, just well, they, they who was the other one? You said somebody. Who was that? CJ. Okay. And where does he live? Did you say on the apartments? Yeah, Heatherbrook. Heatherbrook in Nederland. I've got somebody checking that out. Okay. And so his Facebook is what's his identification on Facebook? Charles uh, Jake. Or CJ, one of the two. Okay. And, and but to get him, you go on the computer. Ooh, he's ratting people out now. Mr. Kirby. Computer. Yes. I got the medicine tabs. And is that how you're dealing? Is that how you're uh, working exclusively in, in getting your meth to you is through Facebook, through the computer? No, I just uh, see I get a hold of him that way and see what he's doing. And then I go to him in, in person and then but you're talk using, about it. You, but you're using the internet to do it, right? No, I, I use the internet to get a hold of my, my, All right. my friend. But, and, then, and then I go hang out with him and then... But then you I get a hold of him. The point is you're connecting with him through the internet to get the drugs, right? That's step one in getting your drugs, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. If nothing further, Mr. Kirby, we'll ask the DEA also. So since that's you know, interstate commerce, yes, the sir. wires in interstate commerce, the feds I'm, are probably interested in that. Just my cards off. Civil things that run. Civil.
Time out again. Get that, back in the booth. You knock so long that you said we're missing the, the films are inside. There are 19 of them. There's something things that you put on your phone. Okay. And there's 19 in here? Yes. You, you counted? Yes. She's taking them every day? No, not in while she's in jail. How long has she been in jail? Since her last hearing. Jesus. I do have some questions for her about those. Well, the, the math doesn't work out either. Yes, sir. About that. But... You got this on 131. So that 131, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. What was, was it Tuesday? Seven. Two six, two seven. There should be no less than 20. But there's 18 of them, you said? 19, I believe, yeah. How many different drugs are you taking? Prescribed? Five, but I don't take all of them. Too many. I only take um, three every day. And for what condition is it that you're doing this for? Thyroid, blood pressure. Here, drug addict. Here. Okay. And the addiction one that you have, what's the addiction for? The opioid? Um, Yes, that would, but that is through an eminent outpatient program for drug rehabilitation program, and that my doctor prescribes me that, and uh, my counselor. See, the problem is, is she's trying to play both sides. She's trying to say that she's in this outpatient program. She's she's being monitored. She's doing what she needs to do. Well, then, well, why are you going to have a hard time with a urine screen and trying to spit in it? And why would well, there shouldn't even be a question if you're doing what you need to do, you're taking your medications, even if you take a, a little bit more than was prescribed, it's not a, a huge deal. But the, the point of this is, is that why go through all these problems if you're not doing meth? No one believes you. So just give it up. Seriously, like done. And look who you're bringing as a witness to court. He has a picture of his ID on his phone. Real credible. Stevens is Stevens is on it on this one. I've also worked in a 12 step program and I have a sponsor. I have been for eight months. So how long have you been on this? Getting high. That I've been on that um for a long time, probably about over a year. Isn't the purpose of this to rehabilitate you to get you off? Of it, wean you off of it? Yes, they are the they're in control of that. They're a doctor. I mean doesn't I, it doesn't it say down here it's, it's habit forming? The okay. doctor has me on the doctor is monitoring it. So you substituted this drug for the other drug? No doctor. Anything else? Good nothing. Is this did the state want to uh Put anything in the record from the probation officer? Yeah, that's all I've been on the record before when we had the prior hearing. Did uh, Mr. Macon was there? Did you have an opportunity to ask her any? Uh, I think you did, but I mean, did you want to ask the probation I officer I anything else? Sure. After okay, all right. Anything else? No. If not, this is uh, all about bond revocation, and the court stands by its order yeah, earlier and finds that uh, nothing has changed uh, at, at the very least the probation officer's uh, credible testimony which by the way is the only credible testimony I, I find <laughs> those two people are about they're off the chart they're not even they're not even they're not even showing up on radar on the planet uh, one person who is admitted regular, meth user supplying the defendant with meth uh, was uh, getting meth from Jefferson County and stating that it was 
it had to be his meth that somehow uh, secreted or excreted onto the the defendant was the explanation for the numerous how many did we say 20 positives not a for meth you know. uh only about five or six 13 12 12 for meth mm -hmm. out of uh, it's five or six you know. no if there's a here we go okay I there was one thing. No. okay there we go i counted these and look at them you can count them. how many Let's get it straight so we're all in agreement with what it says. I checked the ones that were not. So nine. Nine. Nine uh, separate positives from methamphetamine for a period of June through October of 2022. And then um, the testimony, th those were the drug tests that were positive. And then the testimony of the officer who, the probation officer yeah. earlier, who witnessed the defendant Probably. attempting to uh, defraud the drug test. Uh, the court stands yeah. by its order that yeah. the defendant, that there is no bond. It's in light of the testimony of her uh, close or significant other who testified, whose name we believe may be Joe Kirby, but is unable to produce any identification at all. And uh, right now, sir, your address is what is where your physical address is what. 116 Sunfish Bay Lake, Eagle Town, Oklahoma. Say it again, slowly. 116 Sunfish Bay Lane, Eagle Town, Oklahoma. Don't get loud with Judge. Do you be getting loud in uh, timeout. What is that? Uh, a house? house? Okay. Do you own that house? No, my mother owns that house. That's your mother's house? Yes. Okay. And your date of birth is what, sir? 4-15-1997. Where were you born? De Queen, Arkansas. And how long have you been here in Jefferson County? About right. six years. You've been living here six years? Yes. I mean, I lived in Orange County uh, for a couple of months and a little bit of it. And how long? Have you been living with your defendant? About two years. Two years. Okay. And the address was what? 711 Ridgewood Drive. And that's important, H's, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, the court, uh, again, findings are that there are no reasonable terms and conditions of bond that the defendant uh, is able to uh, comply with because it is obvious that the defendant has not only a serious uh, drug issue but also associates closely with um, with people including this mr kirby who almost proudly testified that he has been uh, a drug supplier, uh, a methamphetamine drug supplier. Uh, so uh, there is no bond. The issue is, what are we going to do with this case? I'll talk to the prosecutor. See what you can do, uh, because it's obvious that this person is deep in the deep end of the pool needs some help. And, 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 and you, your problems are not only your your own choices, but in choices of who you associate with. Someone who sat, sat up there and almost with pride spoke about how he can acquire methamphetamine, and which is a crime in any separate time. 
almost with pride testified about the scourge in this county and scourge in the world that he is deeply uh, responsible for. And that's who you have elected to associate with. But everybody makes a choice. Um, anyway, that is, this course is going to stand for right versus wrong and the rule of law. And, and, and I'm not going to let, uh, on my watch, chaos rule amongst us. And that's where you are. And he, 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 he's not even, he, he's got it. <laughs> Look at him with his arm leg. What a douche. <laughs> he doesn't have any foot on the ground. Um, but you are the one who has responsibility to this court under your charge and bond. And you're not getting any better by who you're associating with and what you're being caught what you're being caught doing so y'all figure it out if there's something to be done other than a trial but we'll put all we'll have to just put it on the trial docket which as we all know takes a long time okay uh, see what see if something can happen before you leave or let me know an update thank you